All right, welcome to the uh, Fast and Furious World of Social Media. Before I begin, let me tell you a bit my, about me. My name is Sean Chow, and officially I am the founder and CEO of TTZ Media Inc. TTZ is a uh, media company that provides advertising solutions for technology publishers. It's also the uh, company that holds all my online properties. I've been online since 1998. That is my official fancy title, founder, CEO, but most people know me as the uh, blogger who makes money online by telling people how much money he makes online. <laughs> if you ever read my blog, you understand. Uh, what else? I am the publisher and author of three books on the subject of blogging, social media, and making money by blogging. The first one is called Make Money Online with JohnChow.com. It's totally free. You can download it from my blog at JohnChow.com. And it basically details how to get traffic to a blog, how to monetize a blog, that kind of stuff. The second ebook was called The Ultimate Blog Profit Model. And that's also, again, a free ebook that you can download at blogprofitcamp.com. And it details basically how to create a business model for blogging that's better than the average business model the way you just put up a blog and put some advertising on. The uh, third book is The Natural Book Book. Make Money Online, Roadmap with .com Mogul, was published by Morgan James in New York, and it's available at Chapters, Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, Amazon.ca. And I have a free copy for, yeah, I have enough for every one of you, so you're getting a free copy, and if you stick around, I'll, I'll sign it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. A little, that's something about me. Uh, I worked at a job for a grand total of eight months in my entire life. My first job was at McDonald's. I lasted four hours before I quit. <laughs> Anyone here work at McDonald's? Anyone here still work at McDonald's? Uh, yeah, well, I, you have my respect because I, I just couldn't do it. And that was it. My second job was a phone solicitor for a copper cleaning company, and I lasted about two weeks before they fired me from that job. And my last job was selling car audio for a &B Sound, which is no longer around. And I lasted about seven months before they had me from that job as well. And after that, I concluded that working sucks, and I never did it again. Since then, I've always been an entrepreneur, started businesses, sold businesses. Last, since 1998, all my business has been done online and on the web. This is my blog, johnchow.com. is the one of the biggest personal blogs in the world. Alexa ranking 7,000. Over 100,000 RSS readers, over 55,000 people following me on Twitter. In addition to the blog, I also have other online properties. Twitter Follower, it's a site that helps you get more Twitter users. The Tech Zone is my technology site where I review the latest tech gadgets. This is why I've always got so many tech toys on me. Sano Common is a WordPress plugin. Designed for WordPress, it helps you get more comments to your blog, and we sell that for sixty-seven dollars. It's a cool little comment plugin. TTC Media is my ad network. It's where it's the network where I provide advertising for the Tech Zone and a bunch of other technology sites. Basically, we provide the uh, the ads for these sites, and we just share the revenues. There are about two thousand websites in the network. Blog Proper Camp is an online online training course that I started just last year to a 12-week training program on doing blogging and social media. So these, these are just some of the sites. I have about a couple of dozen other sites in the smaller niches and various, uh, various, not just various things, but these are just some of the main ones. Back in uh, September 2006, I did a blog income case study. And this came about uh, from my personal blog Basically, the personal blog was started just for fun, because that's what was called johnchow.com. If I wanted to make money from it, I would have called it something else. But the blog was started for fun, and it talked about stuff that I can talk about in my technology sites. Like obviously, I can't talk about where I went for dinner in my technology sites, that kind of stuff, so I started, I started my personal blog for that. And one of the things my personal blog talked about was how to, how I make money on the internet, because that's, I've been doing that since 1998. And it was a good outlet. So, and a lot of the time, people 
other bloggers started calling, uh, sending me email, asking, you know, can I look at the blog and give them some tips on how to monetize it, maybe cost me some money from it. So gradually, the blog posts started shifting from how to make money from a content site or regular website to how to make money by blogging. And it was going fine until one day I got an email from some reader who said that, you know, you talk a good talk, but your blog makes no money. So why should I listen to you? And it was true, you know, back then the blog made no money. It was just for fun. It was just my personal blog. But, and I always, I always done by, I always taught by doing. So I really should show that you could make money on a blog and actually doing it instead of just talking about it. So back in September 2006, I decided to, I decided to turn johnchild.com into a money-making blog to show that, yes, you can make money by blogging. And what I can do is I can monetize a blog, and then every month you can follow along, see what I did until we hit our goal. So my goal for the case study was to create full-time income for part-time blogging. And I defined full-time income as $3,000 per month. I just pulled that number on my head. I figure I believe it's the average full-time income of a single Canadian taxpayer, 36,000 bucks a year. And I defined part-time blogging as two hours per day which was how long I spent updating my blog. I do an average of two blog posts a day, they take about an hour each. I figure, if you can make three grand a month and two hours a day, you know, you're not rich, but now you have choices. Because this is gonna be on top of whatever it is you're already doing. In your case, it's going to school. But if you have an extra three grand per month coming in, it basically means you can, well, in your case, you can buy a lot of toys. But, uh, you know, or you can buy, buy a better car, or live in a, well, live in a, help your credit move to a better place, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, that was the case study, and what happened was that every month, I would post, this is what the blog did, this is the traffic it did, this is what I did to create the income, and we're gonna see in next month you follow along. So, in September, prior to September 2006, I mean, from December 2005 to September 2006, the blog made absolutely zero, because it was a personal blog, never intended to make any money. In September 2006, the first month that JohnChild.com became a monetized blog, it made 3.52 and 94 cents. The next month it went to 1,500 and 22,100 the next month and 2,700 the next month. And then in January of 2007, it hit the 3,000 bucks per month goal. After that, I decided that, you know, why stop now? Let's just keep it going. What would happen if I decided to really crank it up and really try to monetize the blog? So the case study continued, and the income kept going up. In 2007, the blog made $180,000. That doubled in 2008 to 360000 And last year, it did over half a million. And that is still on two hours a day. All right? Anyone want to do that? No? Yes? OK. All right. I'm going to teach you a few things today. But there also can be some stuff I'm not going to teach you. Like stuff I'm not going to teach you. I'm not going to teach you how to set up a Facebook account, because I figure everyone here's on Facebook, right? Pretty much, so you don't, I mean, if you're an older crowd, then maybe we'll show you how to set up a Facebook account, but, and I expect most of you have a Twitter account. And so, how many of you have blogs? Yeah, so obviously you guys know how to do that, so I'm not gonna teach you how to like stuff, I'm not gonna teach you how to tweet that you're drinking soda, <laughs> or you're at UBC doing a, you a seminar. What I'm gonna show you is basically, I'm gonna show you how to make money from social media. Uh, and that's what I do. Basically, uh, I, I make a pretty good living doing this stuff. So, um, an example of how, I guess I'll start with the most simplest example. And this was last summer, I was at this, uh, I was at the Austria Club in Richmond. It was uh, the summer fest picnic. And the Austria Club is made up of people who are like 100 plus years old and they don't know understand what social media is and they don't even know what the web is as far as I know. And I was trying to explain to them what Twitter was. And they just couldn't get it. They had no idea, they couldn't get it, they couldn't figure it out. So finally I got really frustrated. I told them that Twitter is where you go get beer money. And I demonstrated by setting up this tweet. Basically says, who wants to buy us beer at this German shingling PayPal to John Chow at johnchow.com? And I go, just watch, the money will come. So half an hour later, I checked my PayPal account and there's a hundred, I keep turning it on. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Hold on there. Yeah, wrong thing to open up. Hope it remembers where I was. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. So, 
I sent out that tweet, and half an hour later, I used my iPhone and logged into my PayPal account, and I discovered $141 was sent to my PayPal account from about seven people. How many people there? So I, show, I then showed it to those guys, he goes, see look, got $141 sent to my PayPal account, now we can buy everyone some beers. And I figured, I would finally expect to know what social media is, and the power of social media, and their reply was, what's PayPal? <laughs> so, sometimes I just can't win. <laughs> right. So why don't, why don't people make money with social media? And I think the number one reason is that most people don't even know it's possible. Like how many here know you can just tweet out, buy me a beer and get money? Oh, exactly. Most people, but, but, and if the people who do know that it's possible to make money with social media, they don't know how to go about it. They don't know how to actually monetize it. So what I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you how to, actually before I begin that, we'll talk about the advantages of social media's business. There are many different types of business model you can choose from. I come from a regular business background. Like before I got into the net, I had a regular bricks and mortar business. I had a print shop. We had two locations and a regular business. Cost over 100 pounds to start. And I thought that was cool, but a social media business or web business has a lot of advantages over a traditional business. First of all, there's the low startup costs. I mean, you can start, you can start a blog for zero. Doesn't cost anything to get a Facebook account, doesn't cost anything to get a Twitter account. You know, compared that to a regular business, like I said, my print shop costs 100 grand to start. And here you can start, any of you here can start a regular web business for well, 100 bucks or so. I mean, hosting, $6.95 a month, a domain name, 10 bucks, 12 bucks. So extremely, extremely low startup cost. And my favorite advantage is you can do it from anywhere in the world. And I have. Last year, I spent over 100 days away from Vancouver. We were in China, we were in uh, Taipei, we were in Asia. And I was able to run my business from those locations simply because my, my business is online. As long as I have access to a notebook, or even just a web browser, because all my stuff, I could actually run my entire operation from just a web browser because everything's just stored in the clouds. And that's the biggest advantages. Number one, that to me is. And another thing is, because I can do it in the world, I don't have to actually get up and go into an office. I know it's all the speaker and you got a lot of you guys are wearing suits. As you can see, I, I, I don't care for that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like any business, potential tax savings. But I'm not a tax attorney, so you have to see your account about that. But you could write out all my travel, I've written off. Every year I throw this big huge party in Las Vegas for all those clients and stuff. It's 10,000 square foot suite, so we just write that off. So a lot of tax advantages. It's your piece of the internet, you know? It's like having your own house. Having, being on the internet is basically, that's just not any piece of the internet, it's just your piece. This is basically, is you. It's also a great way to connect to people. And I've met a lot of people, basically just by being connected on the net. i met a lot of like-minded people. And actually, I believe the last five years, pretty much everyone I know, I've actually met online. Uh, there's only really two simple steps to make money with social media. And of course, there's a lot of hundreds of mini steps in between, but there's only two main one. And basically, the first one is just to build a huge personal network. And once you build a huge personal network, you monetize it. That's basically it. I mean, it uh, sounds simple, but you can break it down into multiple steps. It's kind of like the uh, diet industry, you know. People spend billions of dollars every year on diet and fitness. When it's cheaper matter to lose weight, you only got to do two things, eat less, work out more. <laughs> basically, well, you want to make money with uh, social media, build a huge social network, then monetize it. So uh, my personal network, like I said, 50,000 plus people follow me on Twitter, 5,000 Facebook friends, and the reason is 5,000 Facebook friends, because that's the limit. You can't, I can't have any more Facebook friends, I delete some people. 100,000 100, readers to the blog, 75,000 on the email list. So this is the, this is the kind of personal network it takes to make about half a million dollars a year. And it's based, the bigger your personal network, the more money you can make. 
Building your personal network is number one one goal. It's all about the brand. You need to basically separate yourself from all the other people on online. Uh, you need to own your own name. How many here own their own domain name? Good, I got two. And the rest of you, what you should do immediately is go to GoDaddy, search for your name, and if it's available, go home and tell your parents to buy it. Because in the future, only your own name is gonna be what it's all about. Look at it this way. If you're applying for a job, and on your resume, instead of saying your name 2864 at hotmail.gmail.com, it could be your name at your name.com. What's a lot more impressive? My email is John Chow at johnchow.com. You know, when my daughter was born, and my wife and I were picking up names for her, I made sure her domain name was available even before naming her. <laughs> SallyChow.com. And she's four years old. She, uh, her blog was started before she was born. Her first blog post was an ultrasound, and it said, I'll be out soon. <laughs> <laughs> she has her own Twitter account, and you can follow her at Sally Chow. And like every other four-year-old, she has an Apple iPad. And I can tell that she's uh, growing up in the iPad generation. A couple months ago, I told her to do something that she didn't want to do, and she did this to me. <laughs> I said, what's that? I go, I'm resizing you. <laughs> yeah, kiss today, don't give you the finger day. <laughs> right. So you need to own your own name. And like I said, so right. building your own personal network. So some tips, general tips that you can do to increase the size of your personal network. Uh, start a blog, get on Twitter, Facebook, that's pretty obvious. And sometimes you have to go to them. It didn't come to you. When I first got on Twitter, in order to build my, my Twitter base, what I would do is I would get on Twitter search, and I would just search for keywords of stuff I'm interested in, like technology, Apple, that kind of stuff, and then I would find a list of people who are tweeting about that stuff, and I would follow them. And most of the time, the other person would reciprocate. They would follow me back. It's just like, you know, like, oh, someone's following you, I should follow them back, just as a courtesy. So that's how I started building my Twitter list. Basically, I just, Search for a lot, of, search for people, follow them, find out they follow me back, and just start communicating with them, talking to them. Eventually, my whole network is built up to like 50,000 plus. So, and I would retweet some of their stuff. If they read a good blog post, I would send out their blog post to my followers. So eventually, when I start reading my blog post, they did the same thing to me. So this is just basically social media helping each other grow bigger. Another thing you want is. Be very, very careful what you say online because once it's up there, it, it never leaves. Like it's there forever. I have a friend, he's uh, been in university for the last 10 years. I call him professional students because, uh, simply because I don't think any employer's going to hire him. <laughs> uh, every week, we, uh, we film this little get together, a little meetup, and he's always the last one to show up. So, and as an employer, you know, we're going to Google your name, we're going to find out. And so whatever stuff you put up there, we're going to see. So this friend of mine, as an employee, if, we, if I Google his name, you're going to see videos, him showing up last. So that to me means he's always late. There's also videos of him telling us how he would treat people at London Drugs and saying how he would annoy people. He just annoyed them, you know, like, yeah, it's over there. That kind of stuff. So as an employer, you're going to go, okay, are you going to hire this guy? No, you're not going to hire that guy, obviously, right? And so be very, very mindful of what you, the stuff you put up there because it will, it will be up there and people will find it. And even if you take it down, it's probably been replicated, retweeted, who knows. And read and study more. Like I said, I'm just giving you a broad general overview. It's not, uh, there are hundreds of steps in between. So like, if you really want to learn this stuff and do this stuff, if you like the idea of having both time and money, working from anywhere in the world, just with a laptop, you know, then read and study it. I mean, I, you can get in my book, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can, you can do to uh, learn more about this stuff. It's just, it's like going to school. It's a four year college degree and that kind of stuff. All right, monetizing social media. I'm gonna show you uh, three ways that I make money with Twitter, a blog, and with Facebook. This is just only one example of each 
there are hundreds of ways you can do this, but I'll just show you one of each one just to give you guys what your appetite, give you a taste. I'll begin off with Twitter. And I already showed you the, how I got the beer money, but I'll show you a way that, a way, way that you guys can do it. Twitter, uh, in addition to sending out to your friend asking to buy your beer, which I don't really recommend. Uh, basically, when you have a huge following on Twitter, that is worth money to, uh, to other companies and advertisers because you are an influencer. Uh, I have over 50,000 people following me on Twitter. And to an advertiser, that's worth money because if they want to access those people, they can access them through me. So advertisers would pay me to send out a tweet to my followers. And now there are advertising networks that specialize in this. All you have to do is just go sign up for these networks and then just wait for an ad to come in from an advertiser. And one of them is called Sponsored Tweets, SponsoredTweets.com. So you can sign up for SponsoredTweets.com and just sign up with your Twitter account, just hit offer right using OAuth, and you set your price, how much you want to charge for a tweet, and then you just wait. If you set your price too high, then obviously no advertiser is going to give you an ad, but if you set your price too low, you, get a, you might get too money. And in my case, uh, I get $117.65 to send out one tweet. And of course, writing a tweet only takes a minute, so that works up to like 6,000 bucks an hour. But even if you charge $5, which is actually the starting price, so you can get five bucks a tweet, that's still $5 a minute, so that's six, what's 60 bucks an hour or so, right? So, and like I said, this is something you can do right now, and you, you set your own price. You determine yourself. Twitter, sponsored tweet is one. Another one you can do is called Adly, ad.ly. Adly is a more high, higher end advertising network. They uh, deal with most of you who have uh, more influence, more Twitter followers. And because of that, they, uh, they charge more, or they can get you a higher pricing. Uh, at, in this case, uh, Adley got me this tweet for $1,000, and it's about, it's for M&M's, M&M's candies. And they even, they, already, they even wrote the ad for me. Oh, I, I didn't even have to write it myself. All I do is just push a button. So I got 1000 bucks for pushing a button. That's, uh, but that's at that L-Y. And the last one, you can, there's actually there's a whole bunch of these type of ad networks you can join. And, but I'm going to show you three. These, these are the main three I like. The last one is called MyLights.com. MyLights.com is founded by uh, two guys who used to work at Google. And then I like the same thing. The difference between MyLights.com is that you don't have to wait for the advertiser to come to you. You can start immediately. Because once you sign up for MyLights.com, they already have campaigns you can accept immediately. And instead of paying you on a per tweet basis, they pay you on how many times people click on your tweet, or the little the, the ad link. So in this case here is a Target $25 gift card, won a $25 gift card, 100 winners every day, hurry, contest ends yesterday. So you tweet that out, it sends a link, and when your followers click it, you get 28 cents for the click. So obviously the more followers you have, the more people will click it, the more money you make. I sent out yesterday, I think I got like a 300 and some odd clicks, so that's about oh, 28 cents a click. And, it, and my likes will have a whole bunch that you can choose from and you can select what, what your interests are and you can just print it out. It's, and it's an easy, straightforward way of making some money on your Twitter account. Uh, I do recommend you uh, keep the proportion of paid tweets to regular tweets to uh, a good ratio. If all your tweets are not paid tweets, the people's gonna get pissed off at you, just gonna follow you. <laughs> so I like to, uh, generally, uh, for me, uh, one in 20 tweets is a paid tweet. The other 19 are just regular tweets. And I found out by keeping a ratio around that, around that area, uh, people don't get pissed off at me and they don't unfollow me. So that's uh, making money with Twitter. Uh, making money from a blog. And this is what I really specialize in. And you could put up a whole, you could fill a whole book with this kind of stuff. And actually, I, I have. So. This is my blog. And it makes money with many, many different, many different ways. There's advertising on the blog. There's, uh, but the one, the one I want to show you is something very, very specific. It's called affiliate marketing. Like this blog post here on how to create a paperless office using the Snap, uh, Scan, Snap Scanner in Evernote is a blog post that I wrote only a couple of days ago. And what I did for this blog post was that I'm using it to uh, write about the Scan, Snap Scanner which you can see the picture of. But this, at the end of the blog post, 
I told everyone that you can buy the ScanSnap scanner at Amazon.com, and I linked, I linked it right to Amazon, the page that shows the, Snap, the ScanSnap scanner. And the link is an Amazon affiliate link. See, Amazon has an affiliate program where you can promote anything that's inside Amazon, and Amazon will give you a commission, anywhere from 2 to 6 2 to 8 percent. So, and Amazon, of course, is the biggest website in the world, and you can pretty much, they pretty much sell everything. And just by, just telling people to go to Amazon, you can tell them to go to Amazon with your affiliate link, and if they actually buy it, you get a commission. And the, uh, the program is totally free to apply. You just go to Amazon.com, go to Associates Program, and you can just apply for it. And there are hundreds of companies that offer affiliate programs. Most Fortune 500 companies offer affiliate programs. Buy.com has an affiliate program. Dell.com has an affiliate program. Office Depot has an affiliate program. Office Max, they all have affiliate program. So what, what, I, what we do in my tech sites is whenever we review a product, a mouse or whatever, at the end, we will show where to buy it. And it could be at Amazon, and the person clicks on it, they buy it. We, we make a commission from it. And what we do in, our, in, in my case is that I would try to, using some search engine optimization, try to get my blog post onto page one of Google. And in this case, it was the, the blog post was only a couple days old, but right now when someone searches for how to create a paperless office, I am on page one. So a certain amount of people every day search for how to create a paperless office. So they're going to find me, I'm on page one, they're going to get the, exactly get the traffic. So they search on Google, they find me on the search engine, they come to that blog post, they're interested in how to create a paperless office, otherwise they, they wouldn't search for it. So they find my blog post, they read the blog post, they read how I use the ScanStop scanner to create a paperless office, they like it, they click on the link, they go to Amazon, they buy it, I make a commission. So this is something that you can actually do right now. I have a whole bunch of, I call them niche sites, just sites in specific, very, very specific niches like large notebookmice.com, uh, all these various small niches. The whole object is to Target, get on the page one of Amazon, uh, get, get on the page one of Google for various search keywords. Get on page one, so Google sends the traffic, and they read the blog post. The blog post provides information, makes recommendation on a product that can solve their problem, and they buy it. They make money. So that's that's one of the actually best way to make money from a blog. And then there's a whole bunch of other ways, but this will just this is one way that I, I, I like I recommend. And I have a friend, he has three dozen sites across 10 different categories of vertical. And all he gets, that's all he does. He gets traffic from, from Google. He, what he does is he, he researches what people are searching for, and then he finds out how much volume, so how much search volume there is every single month. And then he looks at how many pages on the internet of serving that volume. And he's trying to look for high search volume, but low service. This way, when he sees something that searches a lot, but there's not as much inventory to service that, he would create a blog or site in that category and then try to rank it on Google, because then there's not much competition because it's being underserved. So just by creating a blog in that category, it's very, very easy for him to get on page one of Google because they said there's not much competition. So therefore, he'll get traffic from Google, they come to go and they can monetize it using Amazon or using another affiliate network or whatever it is he wants to promote. And it works very, very well for him. And he, all he does is just creates these sites. The whole object, the whole object is just to make 50 to 100 bucks a month off each site. And so they, they don't have to get huge amount of traffic. But you just have to get enough traffic to get 50, make them 50 to 100 bucks a month. And it doesn't sound like much, but then he just built the next site, he just built the next site, he just built the next site, and they add up. Right? You have 10 sites making 100 bucks a month, that's 1,000 bucks. You have 100 sites making 100 bucks a month, that's 10,000 bucks a month. And they're just out there, and it's totally passive income. They're just, they're up there, and they continue making money for you every single month. Because no one's going to stop searching for how to make a paperless office anytime soon. So this will, they can go on for years, and that's, that's the way to do it. All right, lastly, making money from a Facebook fan page. How many here have a Facebook fan page? All right, that's good. You have a Facebook fan page. 
A Facebook fan page is, um, no, this is a Facebook fan page. It's basically where people who like me just go to the fan page. And I, use the, I monetize the fan page indirectly. Okay? Basically, I use the fan page to drive traffic back to the blog, and the blog makes the money. So indirectly, you can do it that way. So the fan page is a great way for you to drive traffic to whatever you want. In addition to using the fan page to drive traffic back to my own blog, I would also sometimes post on the wall affiliate deals. Like right now we're on Black Friday. Well, the US went Black Friday. So lately, I've been posting a lot of Black Friday deals. Like I said, you can get a Flip Ultra right now for $99, regular $149. I would attach right to the wall and I would link it with, a, with an affiliate link. So when they click on it, they see and they buy it, I make a commission as well. So that's one way, that's another way you can make money with a Facebook fan page. And the other thing is, when someone comes to my Facebook fan page, they don't, they don't actually see the wall post. The first time, when someone's not a fan, they will see this page instead. So instead of seeing the wall, they see a free ebook. And so here I'm offering an ebook on how to make money online. And as they, to get it, they have to become a fan of my, they have to become a fan, and enter the name and email address. And I make money indirectly by getting the name and email address. Once I have the name and email address, I can then send them emails once a week or whatever and teach them some stuff and also recommend certain things that they can do. And when they buy whatever it is I recommend, I make money that way. So that's how I monetize the Facebook fan page. Something that you should, and one thing I like, like about a Facebook fan page is that they don't have a limit. Like a regular Facebook page limits you to 5,000 friends. A Facebook fan page has no limit, so you can go as big as you want. I highly, so I do recommend you set one up. All right, so that's three examples. I said, there are tons and tons of ways to make money on Facebook. Like if you, if you don't really care about ethics and stuff, I could show you some stuff that will just blow your mind open. <laughs> but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I wanna leave you with a few tips, general tips that doesn't necessarily apply to uh, social media, but just basic tips in general. First one is just to be consistent. Be definitely, this is not a yo-yo diet. So don't, the, one of the, I found one of the biggest reasons people do not make money by blogging or social media is because they're on again, off again, you know. They, they read stories of me making the income that I do and they get all excited, they get gung-ho, so they go start a blog, they start a Twitter account, and first couple of weeks they're going like mad, tweeting, making a blog post, and then they realize they don't see any money coming in, so they quit. So, you know, then next thing you know, they saw an addict or they start addict again, so up and down, up and down. No, the consistency is always the key. Like when I, uh, when I started my blog, you know what is making zero? I did an average do of two blog posts per day. And now that the blog is making over 40 grand a month, I still do two blog posts per day. If, I sh if the blog goes down to zero tomorrow, I will still be doing two blog posts per day. It's just consistency is always a key. And if, and if you would ask me what's been the biggest attribute to why the blog's income's kept going up, because since 2005, I have every day done an average of two blog posts per day. There's never been a single day where there has not been one blog post up. Surround yourself with success. Birds of a feather really do fall together. And you are the sum or the average of the five people you hang out with the most. So if you hang out with people who drink beer and just chase women and stuff, so chances are you probably do that yourself. So to, to ensure that I keep going up the ladder of success, I like to surround myself with people who are at my level and above because they push me up, they don't bring me down. I mean, I used to, I, when I first started, I, I thought making my first 10,000 bucks a month was pretty good. But then I started hanging out with people with like Schumann and Neil Patel and other big internet marketer. And now I, I really, I can't imagine living without a little money. So that's what's happened when you stop hanging out with people who are above your level. Treat your business partner well. Don't try to screw them over. Um, what goes around comes around and payback really is a bitch, so. <laughs> uh, live below your means. I learned this lesson pretty much the hard way. Uh, I, I've been online since 1998, so I went up with the dot-com boom. 
And then I also went down with the dot com crash. And during the boom time, things were going great. I had, I had more my tech sites making a tremendous amount of money. And then when it crashed, my income went down to 1500 bucks a month. You know, during the boom days, I was spending 1500 bucks a month just eating out. So, but uh, I survived because even during the boom days, I still lived below my knee. But, and back during the boom days, I remember I, I, I know people who was making 20,000, they would spend it all, every single one. And of course, when the boom, when the, when the boom ended, they were gone, they were gone. So live below your mean, you know, stay away from consumer debt. That's, uh, that's why we're in a mess that we're in right now, actually. Keep working on your brand. I said, you know, your brand is what's gonna separate you from the 120 plus million bloggers out there. It's, what's, it's what separates me from all the other bloggers, all the other Twitter users. So you gotta keep working on it. Own your own domain name, own your Twitter name, own your Facebook name, own your YouTube name. And if it's taken, well, figure somebody to get it back. <laughs> it's not what you make, it's what you give. I found that also the hard way as well. I find that when I, when I want a few to follow me on Twitter, first thing I do is I follow them first. It's reciprocal. You get back what you give. So if you want love, give love. Want someone to smile at you, smile at them. They'll smile right back at you. And so you want money, give money. Every year during Thanksgiving, I do matching donations for the Union Gospel Mission. So, yeah, uh, I didn't came for money. I was born, I, I grew up in the downtown east side. I was the last year kid when the Strap Corner Elementary. My house was on Cordova Street right across the street from the Union Gospel Mission. And every year during Thanksgiving, I do matching donations for them. So basically, I use my blog and I ask people to uh, make a donation to Union Gospel Mission and I will match the donation dollar for dollar up to $1,000 per donation. And then I would put it all money together and we give it to the UGM. And sure, it might still cost a lot of money, but believe me, I get a lot more. I know I always get, I always get a lot more back. Because if you, you, want to, you want to receive, you got to first give. It's just a philosophy of mine and it works. It's one of the reasons I'm where I am today. Yeah, you attract what you give up. Exactly, just like the last thing. You know, if you give up crap, you're going to get crap back. And lastly, don't take things so seriously. You know, have fun at this. It's not the final destination that's the important thing. It's the journey along the way. So enjoy that journey. It's like, you know, you're all going towards graduation, but it's not really, it's not the graduation. It's what you're going through along the way. That's the important thing. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I can answer them. I don't know, we, I don't know what our time schedule is. Do we have time? 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Oh, do you have any questions? Go ahead and answer. First question, get the book. How's that? You're all getting one anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, how do you find those affiliated programs which you use? Like you said, they were all on the computer. Yeah, every, virtually every single Fortune 500 company has an affiliate program. Uh, CJ.com is the, is the main one. But because a lot of companies, what they do is they're not experienced in affiliate marketing. So what they do is they get a company to handle it, they outsource it for them. So they outsource it to these affiliate networks. And, some, and when you can join a CJ.com, commissionjunction.com, and CJ represents most of the Fortune 500 companies. So the cool thing is you don't have to apply for Dell, you don't have to apply for Office Depot, Office Mac, you just go to apply for CJ.com, and from CJ.com, you'll see the list of all the, every company they recommend, and you just go apply, apply, apply. So choose the one you want, and then of course some company will be automatically approve you, some company would like to review you first before they approve you, so that's what you gotta do. So CJ.com, you could try Linkshare.com, that's another one. So those are the two that will handle most product-based companies and the well-known brands. Uh, Amazon.com, does their own. Amazon actually invented the affiliate program, the whole patent on it. And then there's a whole bunch of other ones like uh, you can do besides, but those ones will get you started for the main stuff. Yes? On your like Twitter and blog posts, what do you, I know you want to keep consistent, but what exactly do you blog about to attract people? Like, same with Twitter. Like. All right, well generally, uh, my blog was called the Miscellaneous Ramblings, because, and that's, and. It's still what it is today. It's, uh, it's basically it's about me and my life because that's why it was called JohnChow.com. And the, the reason it caught an audience, mostly 
mostly because uh, I wrote I wrote a lot about e-commerce and social media, how to monetize that kind of stuff. So it attracted an audience, and so so basically, when people come to Johnson.com now, they come they come looking to how to do blogging, how to do social media. So I stick to that niche, but I still do talk about what I you know dining out, cars, partying, that kind of stuff. But people mostly come just to uh, to read about the the e-commerce stuff. Anything else? Next. Uh, what uh, what methods did uh, you were talking about the um, someone uh, in terms of researching what people are searching and then uh, the ratio between those services? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, there are various tools you can use to find out what people are searching for and how much search volume there is every month and the demand, the, the inventory. Google has their own tool. It's called the uh, Google AdWords Keywords tool. You can do search for that. You just search, just Google, Google Keyword Tools, and you'll see that. And you just type in for so you just type in a keyword on there, and it'll tell you the monthly search volume. Uh, I use a I use a program called Market Samurai. MarketSamurai.com. It's a I forgot how much it costs. It's ninety seven dollars. But MarketSamurai.com basically you just type in what you're interested in, and it will tell you the monthly search volume, and it also tell you the inventory that serves that search volume. So what I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find a keywords with high search volume, low inventory. And once I find that, then I would create a blog for that niche, and I would make sure that keywords repeat a few more times, and then try to get that on Google. Once and then I go to get on Google, traffic will track Google send a traffic, and they just monetize that monetize the blog that way. A market summary is the tool I use. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, like I said I do have folks for everyone, so just come on up. I think those are the best ones out there, but then we're done. Yeah. Can we put our hands together for Josh Howell?